Husbands like that verse, wives submit to your husbands. And they go, see that one, honey? You get that one? But they kind of miss out on the one right before it that says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. And husbands, sometimes when they really claim that verse, they're missing out on love your wives as Jesus loved the church. Now, how did Jesus love the church? He gave his very life for the church because he valued the church so much. So it also says for the husbands to love his wife as he loves and takes care of himself. A possible fitting translation here might be for Jesse to love and take care of Alyssa better than anything he has on the farm. <laughs> now in these scriptures, it doesn't tell the wife to love the husband. It tells her to respect the husband. Well, aren't you supposed to love your husband? Yes, I think you're supposed to love your husband. But why the difference? And I believe it's because God knew a woman's deepest need is to be loved by her husband. While a man's deepest need is to be respected by his wife. So Alyssa, without respect, Jesse will probably respond to you without love. Jesse, without love, Alyssa will generally respond to you without respect. It's called the crazy cycle. And it can work for you or it can work against you. Because in today's world, we sometimes say, well, we sp we're supposed to love people unconditionally. Yeah, that's right. But then we say, respect must be earned, is a general thought. But that's not what the Bible says here. It says for wives to respect their husbands. And I believe as a husband is to love his wife unconditionally, a wife is to love her, is to respect her husband unconditionally. Because if you want to look at it from one side of the coin, is a wife or anyone else always deserving of love? No, but they have a need for it. Is a husband always deserving of respect? No, but he has a need for it. When we get the respect that we need as men, we are better able and desiring to love our wives. And when wives get the love that they need from their husband, they are better able and more willing to give them the respect that they so need. Now imagine, say, five, six years from now, when you two have your first disagreement. <laughs> we'll say Jesse forgets Alyssa's birthday. By the way, you know, you know Jesse when Alyssa's birthday is? Good. <laughs> and don't ever forget it. <laughs> but we'll say that he forgets her birthday. And it's morning and she, she responds in not so nice tone of voice. Because she didn't get enough time to wake up. <laughs> she didn't feel loved. He doesn't feel respected. And so the cycle goes downward. He might walk out because he doesn't like to stay in a place where he doesn't feel respected. She might feel unloved because she walked out. And the cycle goes on and on. Now sometimes couples, it might not have happened to any couple here, but sometimes couples can be stubborn with each other. <laughs> you're the one that should say you're sorry. No, you're the one that should say you're sorry. Well, if, if you wouldn't have done this, I wouldn't have done that. Well, anyone can restart the cycle in a positive way. And rather than wait for the immature one that says, you go first, you go first, in a marriage, the mature one will always go first. The mature one will initiate the right response. Alyssa, respecting Jesse means respecting him in your attitude, in your tone of voice, how you talk about him, how you talk to him, especially when you're in front of others. Jesse, loving Alyssa 
means loving and caring for her in ways that make her feel special and not you, putting her needs above your own. It's easy to get into a you're not doing this for me thing in marriage and get into a stalemate. But when you're loving, you'll initiate. When you're respecting, you'll initiate. My prayer for both of you is that someday you will have one of those marriages that others will say they've got a great marriage. And if that's true, it'll be because you're praying together and it will be because you've learned to love and respect each other in a way that's pleasing to God. Amen. Jesse, will you take Alyssa to be your wife and best friend from this day forward? Will you promise to love her unconditionally, to remain faithful to her, to honor and respect her, and to cherish her as long as you both shall live? If so, answer, I will. I will. Alyssa, will you take Jesse to be your husband and your best friend from this day forward? Will you promise to love him unconditionally, to remain faithful to him, to honor and respect him, and to cherish him as long as you both shall live? If so, answer, I will. Jesse, what symbol of your vows will you give Alyssa? Mm -hmm. These rings that are being given are an outward sign of the inward commitment that they are making to one another. Jesse, will you repeat after me this vow? Alyssa, I give you this ring as a symbol of my love and commitment. And with this ring, and with this ring I be well. Alyssa, what symbol will you give to Jesse of your love? Okay. Will you repeat after me this vow? Jesse, I give you this ring as a symbol of my love and commitment. And with this ring, I thee wed. It's gonna stay on. Thank you.